Hey guys, I am here with Pat Turry, and Pat is the owner of Out There Web Designs. Pat works across numerous platforms to help build branded websites that best suit the individual business versus just working with one specific type of platform. When you're working with Pat, his main goal is really to help showcase your brand and start increasing your business. So today, one of the reasons I brought Pat in is to start talking about what the difference between stock, UGC, and professional photography is, and how does that benefit your website and want to start using it on your website. So I'll hand it over to Pat to give a little bit more of an intro to himself and jump into this topic. All right. Thanks, Carrington. Appreciate it. And thanks for having me. Of course. Um, yeah. So, yeah, we are going to cover this particular topic, but just to give you a little bit of background about me, um, I started this business in 2010. Uh, we started off doing web design alone. Um, and then as we progressed, started adding on learning about SEO, adding on paid ad management, uh, and then more recently adding on uh, software development. So we have a small team of five of us. So it's me and two other web designers. And I have an SEO manager, paid ad manager, and a software developer. Um, so there we go. I love it. So when you have new clients coming on and you have to start talking to them about the different types of content that you put on their website. I mean, you and I have talked about it a bunch. There's so many different types. You can do it yourself, hire professional, go like user generated content style. How do you work through that process with different clients? It's really a budgetary concern. Okay. You know, so when we're talking to clients about it, you know, ideally we want to have the most genuine content that we can have. Uh, both textual content and the imagery and the graphics. So the more custom that we can make it, the better off that they are because it can really showcase what they do and mm -hmm. it really brings forth their brand messaging. But you know, if the budget is really a concern for them, then we can move down to you know stock imagery. You know, and I mean, I've had clients that have literally just sent me iPhone videos, you know, and iPhone you know pictures, you know, of projects yep. that they've worked on and stuff like that. It's not ideal, but sometimes that really does communicate depending on who their audience is. Mm -hmm. So is like looking at the audience also a big part in helping somebody decide what avenue to take? Yes. Yeah. Knowing who the target audience is and who their target market is play, plays a huge role in determining the best way to really bring forth their messaging because mm -hmm. it's all about messaging. Right. You, know, you can have a lot of different industries, you know, and you run across the clients, it's like, okay, they're an auto repair shop, as an example. Yep. It's like, well, yeah, if you own a car, you're our client. Like, not so much, really. Mm -hmm. You know, some auto repair shops like working on classic cars, you know, some work like working on newer models, some work, you know, like working on muscle cars, you know, so it's finding out who their ideal client is. So say like they like working on classic cars then great. Then let's have all that imagery really showcase the classic cars, you know? So let's break out all of, you know, all of these great images of, you know, a 1971 Impala, you know, let's really bring that one forth and it really communicates to their audience of like, okay, these guys can work on this car and they can do a really good job. And mm -hmm. then you take that more generic content and you don't necessarily bury it. You just make it less prominent. You know, so you put it on internal pages. Mm -hmm. So now when a visitor is coming to that site, they see, okay, this is what we actually work on. We can do all this other stuff, but this is what we really want to focus on. Yep. So obviously for me, I am slightly biased. Of when course. When it comes to photography, saying that I do that professionally. So when you're talking with a client and they're trying to decipher what they need to do, what are some of those like main questions to figure out? I'm like, all right, you can use stock photography. What are the benefits and the pain points that come with both? So a lot of times with stock photography, people will use, say, like some of the images they find on the first three pages, which are usually like the most common ones. So is mm -hmm. that like a struggle you find with people using imagery that is more wildly popular? Or do you gear people in a way to say, hey, we can use stock photography but we need to be more unique about it. What kind of process do you use to help people differentiate themselves? Well, in that particular case, we'll ask them, it's like, are you going to be providing the imagery for the website? You know, do we need to bring in a professional photographer like yourself? 
you know, to help you out with this. Um, I very rarely let a client go out and look for stock imagery on their own. Mm -hmm. If they want to use stock imagery, we'll find it. And then we'll present it to them when we're doing the, during the web design process. That way we have a little more control over the imagery that we're going to use as opposed mm -hmm. to them just picking a Google image that could be copyrighted, you yep. know, and stuff like that, which I never recommend using a, a Google image. I mean, there's certain ways you can do advanced searches to find ones that are in, you know, in, um, you know, the Creative Commons license and general public use and that type of thing. You know, most stock imagery that you can find, you know, you'll have the rights to it. So you, we can try to avoid that as much as possible. Yep. Um, but yeah, we try not to let clients uh, give us stock imagery. If they give us anything, we want the user generated content or them to work with a professional photographer to give us the imagery that we need. I love that. So if somebody is just getting started and thinking about, hey, I need a website and they're not sure what they need, do you have three tips and tricks that you can offer them to say like, hey, when you're just getting started, this is some stuff to think about? We have a very detailed onboarding process that we go through. So we'll either let the client uh, go through that themselves or my project manager will go through that onboarding form with them. So those questions are all incorporated into that. That's awesome. Well, thank you so much. Is if anyone wants to talk about getting a website done or learn a little bit more, how can I get in touch with you? Well, and go to our website, www.otwebdesigns.com. There is an S in there, so keep that in mind. It's plural. Um, you can also reach out to me at pat at otwebdesigns.com as well. Awesome. Well, I hope this was helpful for some people, and we'll talk again soon. All right. Thanks a lot, Carrington. Thank you.